my purpose for this session is to just share with you why we are here, what our mission is, what our goals are, and some small progress that we've made so far. Join with me is my colleague, Udit Shah, and at the end, he'll just run through a quick demo. So um, I wanted to start by articulating what we see is the value proposition of a framework such as OSM Mano on AWS, but also across hybrid cloud environments. It's the value proposition for AWS for any type of um, NFV is cost, agility, elasticity, the ability to experiment, fail fast. And um, it's interesting to me, I come from a telco background, and so I'm historically in the club where we build services that do not fail. And then on the other hand, you have cloud native development which is a completely different mindset. It's like lean, fail fast, fail cheaply. So I think we're at a point where these two need to come together. I think that combination is what is the most powerful thing for our customers. I was thinking a lot about this slide because it's, it's an eye test. And it's also a sales slide. But I cannot stand here and not say, not acknowledge that AWS has a rich and broad platform. And I think it's important if we are trying to marry NFV with public cloud, that we have some awareness of the capability so we're not reinventing the wheel or at least that we're leveraging what is already available when it is suitable. So I will talk about this in more detail in my keynote tomorrow. I have a colleague, um, an esteemed engineer, who will also go into some details. But very quickly for this session, I wanted to touch upon some building blocks on AWS that I feel are very key to VNF orchestration. In fact, Coming from a different background, they imitate what OSM Mano is trying to do. So, variety of flavors of VMs, but pre-optimized, so compute-intensive in instances, memory-optimized instances, GPU-optimized instances, inbuilt auto-scaling, elastic load balancing, serverless compute that is event-driven. These are some of the capabilities available on the AWS public cloud. The ability for a vast ecosystem of armies, um, by armies we just basically mean um, pre-baked image instances, which could be VNFs, even network services. Pretty advanced networking capabilities. Everything from a secure, private, virtual network. It could be multi-tenant, it could be single-tenant. Hybrid networking options, support for multiple network interfaces, IPv6 support, secondary private IP addresses, elastic network interfaces, association, reassociation. It's a pretty rich networking capability. Storage, this is the simple stuff, and it's one of our oldest capabilities. I mentioned the marketplace and the ecosystem. So similar to what the OSM Mano Charter is, I think the vision is to create this ecosystem of suppliers and consumers. And um, I will mention that is another appeal for us to be part of this group, because interoperability is part of the core mission. I mentioned this already. Ah, 
I should, I should mention, um, I should call out VMware, which I find very um, relevant to this group, because um, interestingly, AWS and VMware are strategically uh, figuring out how the VIMs handshake. I mentioned hybrid networking. Orchestration, which is the O in Mano. While it is true that the orchestration on AWS does not focus on network functions, it focuses on application function, focuses on DevOps, but the core building blocks are there. So you have cloud formation, which allows you to just templatize a multi-VDU environment, multi-VNF network service, for example. You have fleet management tools that can do patch management, state management. And you have many capabilities for dynamic orchestration. I'll talk about this some more tomorrow. But I think that's key for orchestration to be dynamic. These are not substitutes for the OSM Mano stack, but these are tools available to any framework, such as OSM Mano, to leverage in the Vim context of AWS. You're probably thinking, why am I talking about databases and analytics? Goes back to the view that we have that orchestration has to be dynamic and it has to be data driven. So having provided that context, I just wanted to share with you what we see are very timely and typical use cases for Mano. Consider that you would have a Mano stack on-prem. Consider that our typical consumer, our typical customer in this room will have an on-prem installation. Where we find our customers asking us to collaborate is for capacity, is for capacity augmentation, global outreach, so to launch services where they don't have data centers, and for fault tolerance, because they want to take advantage of the backbone that's been built up. So this is, in a high level, the current imperative and value proposition that we see for orchestration across private and public cloud. It's entirely conceivable that it need not be a hybrid environment. It can be an all-in environment on the cloud, but um, at this point, we see our customers largely asking us for hybrid scenarios. So having um, shared with you, hopefully, the reason why we see Mano as a very key enabler for our customers, a key enabler for them to take advantage of their private infrastructure, but also leverage the cloud. Wanted to share with you what my team's mission is and why we are here. So we want to provide our customers with the option to orchestrate across their existing infrastructure and the public cloud. We want to make all the capabilities available on our platform available to the stack that performs this orchestration. And we want to be part of this community because it has the voice of the customer. And we believe in um, interoperable standards-based ecosystems. So our goals are to validate this interoperability with AWS, all the efforts of the OSM community, it is to continue as they are to foster the ecosystem, to harvest best practices, to contribute to the community development. Our efforts have been modest so far. We have not been in the community for long, but we've um, 
created a setup guide for OSM Manu on AWS. I will be sharing the document with Francisco right now. It's in S3, but uh, we would like to have it available to the community. And now we're working on slightly more real world examples. And again, um, we are part of this community, so we will work with the community on these real world examples for um, AWS Vim interoperability with the Mano stack. So I shared some of the progress we've made. This is just um, a screenshot of um, OSM installed on EC2. This is the current link for the setup guide. And um, I'll make sure that the leaders here have this so they can share it with the community. In half an hour, you can set up everything, do some basic tests on um, EC2, on AWS. We have started working on a cloud formation template, which basically launches um, a Windows server in a subnet for security, because um, typically in a private subnet, you cannot access it directly. We can expand this cloud formation template, especially if we're doing network services with multiple VNFs. And at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Odith, and he'll just walk you through screenshots um, of uh, the steps to instantiate a simple DNS forwarding VNF on uh, AWS. Thank you. Thank you, Shoma. Uh, my name is Udit Shah, and I'm a cloud support engineer with Amazon Web Services. Uh, I'm going to be taking you through some screenshots of, the, of a demo of setting up OSM on AWS. Uh, it's been an interesting experience for us to have this working. So we start off with an OSM demo instance that you see there, which is basically an instance which has the OSM installed on it. Um, when you access the OSM GUI via a Windows instance in the same subnet, uh, you go to the catalog and onboard the DNS forwarder VNFT. When you do that, we make sure that the image over here, the VM image that you see, is the, is the one that you would want to use. Um, of course, there are a lot of other options on the AWS console for different images that you can use. This image is the default that came with the VNFD package, so we've gone ahead and tested with that. So if you go to the console and you click on AMIs, we can find a lot of images. This is the one that we use, but we can, you can feel free to use any image as per your convenience. The other thing to make sure in the VNFD descriptor is the flavor of your VM that you want to use. And these, there are different combinations of VMs or flavors of VMs that you can provide when you create the VIM. So uh, feel free to choose any. Uh, this one has one CPU, one GB memory, and 100 gig uh, storage space. Next is onboarding the DNS forwarder NS. And in this, the, the one thing that we need to make sure is the subnet, it's a Vim network name. It should be the same, uh, same subnet in which your OSM instance resides. So we just make sure of that. Um, now we go ahead and instantiate it. Uh, we can see that the subnet name is the same as we specified in the NS descriptor. Uh, well, upon clicking launch, in a few seconds you will see that you have a running NS. The instantiation is successful. Um, when we go to the console, we see a new instance over there, NS, which is the one that we just launched. And uh, this is basically, this can be done in Easy, easy uh, in like half an hour, following the setup guide that Shoma shared, and uh, so if you take the IP for the NS and you can just search into that to see uh, if it's working. You can also do a simple NS lookup against the IP, uh, as I've done over here, to make sure that everything is working fine with your with the NS that we've just launched. Um, so this is basically the entire setup and the demo that we've, we've wanted to present. 
These are my other colleagues, Tipu, who would be speaking tomorrow along with Shoma and Matt, another of our colleagues that has worked heavily on this project. Thank you, guys.